Hey there YouTube, this is Ellie Rogers. Um, this is going to be a video on how to use and clean your stethoscope. It was a requested video and so here it is you guys. Um, first things off, um, I made a previous video on a review on a Classic 2 SE Litman stethoscope and if you're interested in watching that um, I will place a link down below so that you guys can um, watch that if you're interested. Um, okay, so let's jump right to it. How to use your stethoscope. How to properly put the ear pieces in your ears. I have um, a couple tricks that I was taught several years ago when I began to use one. Um, I bought this plastic thing here that's initially for my name, but um, when I bought it, the reason the first time that I bought it or the reason why I bought it was to help me guide me um, to which as to which direction the earpiece should go in my ears and um, it's only about seven dollars if not maybe less than seven um, or possibly more than seven now um, when I bought this stethoscope it was about four years ago so it might have been cheaper four years ago so yeah um, I use this as my guide to um, remind myself that I want people to see my name and so I need to put it this way if I want people to see who I am sort of thing is how I thought about it. Um, but another way that you can um, guide yourself is by the direction that the earpieces are facing. If you um, look at that, if you put them side to side, you'll see that they're um, pointing away from your face and so that's a good way to remember as well um, the ear pieces need to be facing away from your face is a good way or um, not being able to see the um, earpiece holes if you can see the holes before you put it in your ears that means it's backwards for example for somebody standing where you guys are standing you can't see the holes correct and so that will be the right way for you guys to put it on and then if I'm gonna put it on this is the right way because I can't see the holes but you guys can see the holes right now and so that's the way that it goes in your ears if you're having troubles remembering that you can like I said you can always go to the store and buy one of these to kind of just kind of like a quick um, tip to help you um, see the, the correct side that these are supposed to be put in your ears. Okay, now moving on to the bell. There's two ways that these bells can be um, put into. For example, this would be closed and that will be opened. And the difference between that is that if it's opened and you have this earpiece in your ears, if this is opened, if I tap here on the bell, you can't hear anything. And so when it comes to taking somebody's blood pressure, if your bell is open, which you can see there, you can see the hole, you can't hear people's blood pressure when you put it down their arm. And so, um, before you take a blood pressure, you want to make sure that um, your bell here is closed. If you have a stethoscope now and you want to put it on your in your ears and try this out so you know what I'm talking about, you're more than welcome to. Okay, this is a closed bell here. And you might want to do it really gently because if your bell is closed and you tap here, it's very sensitive and you can hear it very well too. So when it comes to taking someone's blood pressure, you will be able to hear um, better. So make sure that your bell is always close before you take a blood pressure. And the way to open and close your bell is the tubing on your stethoscope. If you turn it or twist it, it should open and close it. And on mine, it's either way I can turn it right or left. Um, I don't know about other stethoscopes because like I said in my previous video I've only owned this one and it, I've had it for four years and so I don't know on other ones. Um, 
excuse me, um, for those who have a adult side and a pediatric side, which is a much smaller than this one, um, I don't think you're able to see the hole because you have a side just like this one on this side. Um, those might be slightly different, but I'm pretty sure that there has to be a way. I mean, you don't always have to look at the hole to make sure your bell is closed. You can always do it by, if you have it in your ears, if you tap it and you hear it's really loud, then that tells you your bell is closed. If you twist it and you tap it and you can't hear the tapping up here, then that means that your bell is opened. Okay, and as far as cleaning, maybe I should take this out of my ears. Ah. When, it, when it comes to cleaning your stethoscope, I usually use Clorox wipes, um, disinfecting wipes, or even um, alcohol wipes. Whatever you can find that is disinfecting or kills any type of bacteria. Um, I don't suggest you squirting stuff onto it, but if it's a wipe, it's probably better. Um, I usually wipe these earpieces down with um, alcohol wipes. And if you work in healthcare, you will probably have an abundance of Clorox wipes that you can use to disinfect this piece here. And um, I use Clorox wipes at work to kind of wipe this down. I clean all this down, I'll wipe it down like this. And so when I come to this piece, I'll just wipe it in this direction. Start from the middle and out. And then with this piece, you want to be kind of careful that you're not like overly squeezing the wipe so that it drips um, fluid inside of that little hole because that might interfere with your listening if it's um, wet in there. Um, make sure your bell is closed before you clean it too and kind of just wipe it down. You can also um, push these this little plastic or rubbery piece. You can always push it back and clean behind there too. Um, let me tell you it's a little bit hard to put this rubber back in but it's not impossible. So um, you're more than welcome to clean behind this rubber piece like I said. Um, and when it when it comes to cleaning in between this area here, it kind of gets a little bit hard because it obviously, or I don't know, you might have smaller fingers, but my fingers are pretty big. They do fit, but it's kind of hard to get, especially in this area down here. What I use is I'll put the Clorox wipe down and I'll grab like a pencil or a Q-tip or whatever is small enough to kind of just guide the Clorox wipe in there to clean it off. Um, so yeah, um, I think that's the only piece. Oh, and don't forget to clean behind this piece that you have here. Mine's probably pretty dirty because I always forget to clean under here. But um, for one of the bad things about this thing, I guess one negative thing is once you put it in, I don't think you can take it out unless you break it. And so cleaning this under this area can be a little bit hard just because um, once it's these pieces are in, there's no way out unless you rip it. Um, so that can be a challenge. Um, so yeah, that's the end of my video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to message me or leave me a comment below and I will most certainly answer those for you. Um, Thanks for watching my video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.